Today, we're going to be continuing our series on the Monport GI60 60 watt MOPA fiber laser. And I'm super excited to share this video with you today because today we're going to be using the rotary attachment to create some awesome custom engraved tumblers and water bottles. Today, we're going to go over the rotary setup. I'm going to show you the projects. And of course, we're going to talk a little business. Hey, what's up and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, thank you very much for coming by. And if you're a returning viewer, thank you so much for coming back. All right, so let's head over to the fiber laser and get this thing set up. So as far as the setup is concerned for this video, this is not gonna be a comprehensive deep dive video into how to set up this rotary. But what this is gonna be is a kind of a down and dirty basic installation or setup of the rotary. And really, I came to find out that you don't have to get too complicated with this. It's not that hard. It's actually pretty simple to set this whole thing up. Now, if you are interested in really diving deep into how to set up this rotary and all the different settings in Lightburn, then I highly recommend you check out the series by Laser Everything. They have a ton of great videos, not only on rotary setup for the Galvo lasers, but all sorts of lasers in general. So I highly recommend you check that out. I will link the two videos down below in the description that I researched the most in preparation for installing this rotary, and I highly recommend that you check those out. But for now, let's go ahead and get started into the setup. Okay, so the first thing we got to do, obviously, is plug the rotary in, and that's easy enough. All we got to do is take the power cord and hook it up to the back of the laser. Next thing we have to do is actually take the rotary and install it onto our laser bed. So in my case, I'm going to go ahead and install the rotary on the left side of the laser bed, but you could choose to mount this anywhere that you want. I am making sure that I'm not tightening these screws right now at this point because we still have some alignment that we're going to need to do. Now that I have the rotary semi-secured onto the laser bed, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a pencil and I am going to chuck that up into the rotary and this is going to help me align the rotary to the laser bed. So in Lightburn, what I've done is just drawn a horizontal line in the middle of my work area and I'm going to hit the frame button and this is going to project a nice horizontal line onto my laser bed. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust the rotary so the line is going straight across the pencil. Once I'm happy with the alignment of the rotary, I'm going to go ahead and tighten the screws down at this point. So now our rotary is aligned and secured. We've got to get into Lightburn and go ahead and go to the rotary setup. All right, so with our rotary connected and we're in Lightburn now, what we're gonna to need to do is go on the top right here and we're gonna click on this button here. It's called the rotary setup. And we'll be using a chuck rotary, so we'll make sure that is checked. We're going to click the box to enable the rotary. And through my testing, I discovered that I do need to go ahead and click on the reverse rotary button here. And I also have return to starting point enabled as well. That's helpful because when the job is going to be done, the rotary is going to turn all the way back to where it began. That way, in case you need to do the second pass or something like that over it, and you don't move anything, you can just go ahead and run the job again. Okay, so we're going to come back to split setup here and overlap. What I want to first do is make sure that our rotary axis is set correctly. So our rotary is set up along the X axis, but it is turning like up and down along the Y axis. So we need to make sure that the Y axis button is clicked. And you can see the graphic here explains how that works. So if you had the rotary set like on the north or south position on your laser bed, then you would want to have this click to the X position because it would be rotating along the X axis. But in our case, we're going to make sure it's on the Y. So our rotary settings, these are really important. So with the rotary instructions from Montport, it said that this number is supposed to be at 12,800 steps per rotation. So I'm going to insert that. And we are going to input our object diameter later on once I measure my cup with calipers. But that dimension is going to go there once you do that. And the circumference is automatically going to populate. So if we had something that was four inches on diameter, it's going to automatically populate this circumference for you. And the motor speed settings, I did not touch these. I left these at these default settings right here. I'm sure they have their purpose at some point, but I got by just fine doing these. So now let's go back to the split setup here. So generally what you're going to want to do is have the split setup be at about your line interval. Okay, so in my case, my line interval on this is going to be 0 0.025 millimeters. So I am going to switch that to 0 0.025. And my overlap, I'm going to set at zero. 
I do not want to have any overlap on this job. Now, like I said in my intro of the video, there's a lot more that goes into these settings. And if you really want to dive deep, I really recommend the video series by Laser Everything. They go into all these settings in great detail. They have like a whole 20 minute video just on these settings and setting up the rotary. So very informative. This is just a down and dirty basic setup. And honestly, it worked quite good. So I'm very happy with this. Okay, so that's really all we need to do in the rotary setup tab. So I can hit okay and we can get on with the rest of the setup. The next thing we have to do is attach our test cup to the rotary and go ahead and set our focus. So for my test cup, you'll see in a second here, I've gone through a lot of different material tests and also focus heights. So anytime you're doing any new material, it's really important to do material tests on specific material that you're gonna be working with. And I've gone ahead and done a few different material tests on this coated tumbler here, and it's really helped me dial in my settings. The biggest thing that I can tell you with the fiber laser when you're engraving these coated tumblers is you want to make sure that you defocus the laser. But So what I mean by that is we're gonna actually take our fiber laser out of focus by raising the laser head about five millimeters above where it should be, and that's gonna drastically improve the quality of engraving that we're gonna get. So the thing that makes fiber lasers really special compared to CO2 lasers is that they're able to engrave metal. But in this case, we don't wanna go down all the way into the metal and get into that stainless steel. All we wanna do here when we're doing these tumblers is we wanna make sure that we're engraving the coated material off the top surface, but leaving the stainless steel intact. So defocusing the laser really helps to do that because what it does is it increases the spot size of the laser, therefore decreasing the amount of energy that it's putting into the cup. So it's got enough power to get through the coated powder coating or whatever material that is coating these cups, but it doesn't have so much power that it's actually etching into the metal. Defocusing by at least five millimeters is what I came up with on my best material tests here that works for my particular laser, but make sure you experiment that with your own as you're dialing in your own settings. So here's the only issue I had during the setup. My production cup has a larger diameter than my production cup. So when I went to go level my production cup, it needed to tilt back to match the laser head, but I wasn't able to do that because the bottom of the cup is actually hitting the bed because of the low profile nature of this rotary. In order to fix that, what I need to do, and what I've already done, is just to make a few shims that go underneath the rotary system, and this is gonna raise up this end so I'm able to lower the right side of the cup down and level it with the laser head. And to make these shims, I just created a quick little file in Lightburn and cut them out of quarter inch MDF. I'm gonna use three stacked together in order to raise my rotary three quarters of an inch. So here you can see the shims I placed underneath my rotary, which gives me the extra height in order to raise my cup up a little bit so it's not touching the bed. And now we can level this and the cup now matches the level of my laser head. All right, so we are ready to go. The last thing I did after the setup is I used my digital calipers to measure the diameter of my cup, which measured out to 103 millimeters. So I went ahead and inputted that into the rotary setup area. And now we are ready to run. <laughs> So that is looking fantastic. That was about four minutes. Let's get this thing cleaned up and show you the final result. So to clean this, we're just gonna use a little bit of 99% isopropyl alcohol and a magic eraser. Just gonna put a little dab on the magic eraser and go ahead and lightly remove all these marks. All right, we're looking pretty good. The last step of this process, besides washing this off in the sink, is gonna be able to hit this with a little bit of degreaser. I'm gonna use a brand called Crud Cutter and a microfiber cloth just to give this one final cleaning and we are pretty much good to go. All right, well that tumbler turned out awesome. So let's try one more. I've got a different style here. This is a water bottle and it's not tapered, um, but let's get a measurement on this. This is 
90.2 millimeters. So let's get this chucked up and run it with the same settings. I'm going to attach this one to the chuck with the small um, drinking end here because the bottom of this cup has this radius here and it's not really grabbing onto the jaws that great. So no problem. Easily can do it this way. I really like the rubber on these jaws. Uh, it hasn't marred anything that I put in here so far. It's doing a really great job of protecting the products. So there you have it. I could not be more happy with how these turned out. To be honest, I was a little nervous about using this rotary because I had never used one in the past before, but I cannot believe how easy it was to set up and how quickly these were to engrave. I'm really looking forward to adding these tumblers and water bottles to our line of products. I think they're gonna do really well. I think this is a really great product that any laser engraving business can get into and do well in. Now, I know there's a lot of people selling these, but I think there is such a great need for this product that there's plenty of room for lots of makers to be creating these and selling them. The possibilities are really endless with this type of product. These can be made for local businesses, sports teams, schools, all sorts of places, so there's a huge demand for them. And the customization, again, is key on these. Being able to take any logo or any design, any name, and put them on these cups for a customer is valuable. If you enjoyed this video or it helped you out in any way, please let me know down in the comments below. And please consider subscribing to the channel if you're not already, so you don't miss out on anything. I hope you enjoyed today's projects. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.